Hello everyone. This is Reverend Naoya Okano from the Los Angeles Kedats Church. Today, as the subject of my sermon, I'd like to challenge ourselves to think deeply about a huge question. What is the meaning of life? Now I realize that there are as many answers to this question as there are people in this world. I respect all points of view, yet as a minister of a religious teaching, I wanted to challenge myself and express my opinion. While some Buddhist monks say it's not necessary to know the meaning of life, that's fine. But for those of you who are seeking an answer, I hope this video helps. I am a fan of Dan Takahashi, the former Wall Street hedge fund investor and the popular YouTuber investment advisor. You always hear him saying, investing is your own responsibility. In the same way, my opinion is just one idea. It is up to you if you accept it or not. I want you to understand that. Before I begin, I want you to know that two concepts form the foundation for my beliefs on the meaning of life. One is the eternality of souls and the, and the other is reincarnation. Eternality of the soul is what our founder Gerats Kongo said, is the essence of oneself not the brain, heart, or body. It is one's soul. Even after the physical death of one's body, the soul lives eternally in the spiritual world. Most of us are familiar with the concept of reincarnation. It is a belief that when one passes away, the soul returns to the spiritual realm where it remains for a period of, of time and then is reborn into the physical world again in another body, place, and time. My opinion, opinions about the meaning of life are based on these two concepts. As I said, there are countless opinions about the meaning of life some may see life as working hard, making a lot of money, expanding businesses, raising children, traveling, eating delicious food, getting older, creating works of art and music, caring for others, benefiting society. For most people, all the joys and the misfortunes of daily existence may compose the meaning of life. Others may give it no thought or meaning at all. They are all correct. If you have your own idea, that's the answer. Please stick to it. But for myself, when I think deeply that the essence of self is in one's soul, I conclude that the meaning of life is in the soul's awakening or enlightenment. The word Gedatsu itself has the same meaning. Our founder expressed it as a perfection of character. In Shugendo, the ancient Japanese spiritual practice in which Gedatsu has its own roots, there are ten levels or realms of a state of mind consisting of six paths and four divine realms. The six paths are from the bottom, hell, pritas or hunger, animal, asher or anger, human, and the summit. The goal of life is to rise above these lower paths and enter the four higher divine realms, where one's spiritual cultivation creates true peace, joy, and love, and one is free from 
all emotional and physical troubles and worries. The six lower path clearly describe one's state of one's of state of mind. When we look at our society today, some people may think that we indeed do live in a kind of hell. We see people who behave like animals, acting without self-control and driven by selfish instinct. Those who are in the Ashura level are continually fighting with others and complaining. When people reach the level of a human, they can enjoy their lives. We can even find individuals who conduct their lives with such integ integrity, generosity, and compassion. They are like saints on earth. Abraham Lincoln was such a person. So is the Vietnamese Zen poet Thich Nhat Hanh. People like these should be in the summit or even in the divine realms. You may ask, how can we reach the four divine realms? The sixth level or summit is like a gateway at the top of a mountain. Imagine that as you climb step by step to reach the summit, you finally arrive at the top of the mountain. You want to go higher into the divine realms, but there's no ladder. You only can look up in, into the clear blue sky and the cliff descending before you. You realize you can easily fall into the lower levels. It means that no matter how successful we may be in our business, how much money we earn, or how much we enjoy our leisure time, it won't lead us to true happiness and peace of mind. For example, we may work very hard and attain financial wealth and security. There is nothing more that we need materially. Yes, that's a wonderful thing. We deserve that. But they are all symbols of outer prosperity, which is fleeting. Material wealth cannot create lasting inner happiness. The four divine realms are where spiritual consciousness is developed and one discovers true happiness. In other words, where there is no worry or suffering. Shakamuni Buddha said, we don't own a single thing. In other words, money, property, business, family, or even our body is not our belonging. We can't enter the spiritual world with them. They are possessions only while we are in this present world. Therefore, they are not the essence of true happiness. On the contrary, pursuing such material gain for one's happiness are often the cause of trouble, worry, and suffering. That has absolutely no place in the four divine realms. The traditional Shugendo, Shugendo method of arriving at the 10th level is to go into nature alone to practice strict physical and spiritual discipline. Gedats Kongo studied and embraced the Shugendo doctrine, but he believed that the 10 realms could be practiced in one's daily life. He adapted the traditional Shugendo religious form, but modified it to, to fit the needs of the masses. This is the practical approach of the Gedatsu church. Where then, as a student of Gedatsu, do we find true happiness? My answer, to do things for others. When we find joy, happiness, and peace of mind in helping others, I believe 
the gate to the four divine realms will open before us. Pursuing what we want, someone to love, a bigger house, expensive clothes and jewelry, luxury cars, travel, enjoying gourmet meals, they are all good. They are not bad things. However, we should realize that they are not the source of true happiness. Because I work for the church, my salary is certainly not great, but it is adequate. Working at the church, enjoying my home life with my wife and the children, having the time to rest my mind and body, and giving thanks each day for being well and healthy, these are the elements of a simple and ordinary life. Once I discovered the happiness and the fortune of such an ordinary life, my desire to own a bigger house or a luxury car disappeared. I started to feel those things were unimportant. Instead, I value the things that are priceless, rejoicing to see my children grow, praying that the reckless driver avoids an accident, appreciating the sunshine when it's clear and rainfall when it rains. Do your best with what's in front of you. I believe this attitude will elevate you to higher spirituality and ultimately to the four divine realms. To be sure, I still get frustrated or get, get angry sometimes. I realize that it's because I am not yet in the four divine realms. It is very hard to remove all negative emotions, but that's why we have religious practice. We can improve ourselves every day. Christ, Buddha, and even our founder, Gedats Kongo, were in the state of the four divine realms for sure. Many others have reached these realms as well. Follow the path these pioneers have walked, learn from them, and step forward toward true happiness. That, I believe, is the meaning of life. In the beginning, I talked about reincarnation and how departed souls, after a period of time, are reborn into the physical world to further their spiritual education in each lifetime. I believe that certain souls who have succeeded in their spiritual consciousness and cultivation are allowed to enter and remain in God's divine realms. They no longer need to reincarnate. That's my interpretation. I have no idea what kind of place God's realm is. I don't know how many times I need to reborn to be allowed to enter, but I look forward to the day I finally go there. Again, this is just my opinion. Everything is up to you, but this is my truth. I know that many people do not believe in the existence of souls. For those people, I refer to Pascal's Wager. The French philosopher Blaise Pascal believed that humans bet with their lives that God either exists what does not. He argued that a rational person should live as though God exists and seek to believe in God. If God does not actually exist, such a person will have only a finite loss, whereas if God does exist, he stands to receive infinite gains and avoid infinite losses. So believing in the existence of God only gives you positive meaning in your life. I feel that the same reasoning can be applied to the existence of souls. 
we should live with the conviction that our soul is eternal and the essence of who we are is in our soul. I believe that this idea strongly motivates us to live with a positive attitude and manner that cultivates true and lasting happiness and peace of mind. I hope that this video helps you to enrich your life, if even just a little bit. Thank you very much for watching this video. Have a wonderful day.